All right, let's take a look at this. We've got a copy of Different Seasons, an old paperback copy, and I've, I've been saying for decades that Different Seasons is my favorite Stephen King book. And some hardcore Stephen King fans might disagree with me, and uh, I understand. Remember, I'm saying it's my favorite book. I'm not saying it's his best book. I'm saying it's my favorite book. And my reason for liking it so much is probably different from theirs. And by theirs, I mean the, the reasons for the hardcore Stephen King fans. All right, so I first read Different Seasons probably in the early 1980s. I was still in high school when I read this. And uh, when was this published? Uh, let's see. Any reviews? Mm. All right, so if we go down here, so first printing, uh, that's probably the paperback, when was the, what's the, the copyright, okay, so the hardcover probably came out in 82, and then maybe the uh, paperback, and I think the first I read was a paperback, so probably 1983, 84, okay, anyways, I guess I bought this one, I, I remember buying this one at a secondhand bookstore, it was probably in 2000, I guess April 2005. It's either that or it was April 5th, but I'm guessing the bookstore probably does month and year. Yeah, that's not 50 cents. 50 cents for different seasons? Are you kidding me? Anyways, I've cleared out a lot of books over the last few years. You know, I buy them and then sell them and then buy them and sell them, buy them and sell them. But I decided to keep different seasons once and for all. It's good to have them around. You know, when you get reader's block and nothing looks interesting, there's always a, a few books that you, you know you can reread and be interested. And uh, with this, I can always pick a story from this book. So let's take a look, closer look. Okay, so here you got your, your initial reviews, a bunch of newspapers that probably don't exist anymore. I don't know, does the Richmond News Leader exist? Yeah, let's see. You got some more. Hey, where's some other books coming out at the time? Okay, so these are some of his other books. All right. Which ones did I read? Different Seasons? Yes. Cujo? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Dead Zone? Yes. Firestar? Yes. Night Shift? Yeah. Which one did I read? Night Shift? Yeah. Okay. So these are the books of his that I've read. I think after It, I stopped. I stopped reading with It. Maybe tried Needful Things after that. So that's what I mean. I'm not a hardcore fan. There was a certain point where I said, all right, I'm not reading more Stephen King books because uh, it's not really my genre. So he was so good that he got me interested in a genre I don't normally read. And I respect that a lot. All right. So you've got... Four, what are they called, novellas, novels, but they're not short stories, but they're not full-fledged novels, and I like these a lot, because you know, they, don't get, they don't get bogged down, sometimes novels get bogged, every novel gets bogged down at some point, even Stephen King novels, so you've got each story representing a season, so you've got spring, summer, fall, winter, people forget that, they just remember the stories, they forget about the, the seasonal theme, and then the first one, Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. I don't know, I think the person who tells the story is kind of important too. And then, I don't know, this is one of his tricks. You always stick a, uh, like I remember you use Springsteen sometimes too, at the beginning and then match it up with a, you know, literary quote. I don't even know what that means. I guess you got Hope Springs, the Colonel, and then you got Rita Hayworth, and the, I think there's no the. I'm used to the Shawshank Redemption, you know, because I remember uh, in the, what was it, 1990s, early 2000s, one of those cable stations were in that movie almost every night. So anytime you wanted to watch the Shawshank Redemption, I think it was TBS, between 7 and 9, it was the Shawshank Redemption. Good movie. I think it was one of the first movies where Morgan Freeman played the uh, the wise old man. You remember there was, went through a time where everything was a wise old man. What if he's a wise old man in real life? Probably some like crazy lunatic. <laughs> That'd be funny. I mean, it wouldn't be funny to his family because crazy lunatics are tough to deal with. All right, let's take a look at the first sentence. All right. I like looking at the first sentence in books and short stories. There's a guy like me in every state and federal prison in America, I guess. I'm the guy who can get it for you. That's a good sentence. See, no wonder people like it. And the reason I mention this is, uh, the reason this book matters to me is because I've always been a reader, you know, I've always read like a lot of comic books or best song fiction or an occasional classic, but uh, back in high school when I was first reading this, I had a bunch of friends who didn't read and they didn't understand why I read so much. I had one friend in particular who'd always get annoyed with me. He'd tell me about a great party going on tonight and he'd say something like, ah, why don't you go? And I'd say, eh, I'm reading this book and I want to finish it. And my friend would get mad and he'd say, man, you're wasting your life reading and you're doing other things like partying and chasing girls and getting drunk. And, and I'd say, well, you're wasting your life going to some of these stupid parties and, you know, getting into fights. 
and you could be expanding your mind and learning stuff. And I was right though; he did get into many fights. My friend, he wasn't even a good fighter. He always lose, and then he. Okay. Um, anyways, the point is, one time he said, "Well, give me a book. Let me see what's so good about it." So I learned this, and I know he started off with this story. And uh, a few days later, and he started raving about, it. man, it's like seeing a movie in your head. And I said, I know, you know. So he understood, and he left me alone after that, but he still gave me grief about not going out. And uh, I mean, the guy, he never became an avid reader or anything, but I think he did read the, those Cornelius Ryan World War II books, like The Bridge Too Far and The Longest Day. Anyways, I'm not going fast. Okay, so here's the second, second story. And I also had a roommate in college. It was Summer of Corruption, so there's Summer. I think there was a movie. I don't think it was very good. I never saw it. The story's okay, though. I think this is the long one. Like, man, this one goes on forever. Oops, I think I just accidentally ripped the page. All right, so. One handing a book with an old paperback that you don't want to break apart. It's a little awkward. All right, so this is Fall, fall from Innocence, Plan Words. Um, anyway, um... I also gave this book to a roommate in college, and he only read it and he had to. And he actually read the whole thing, so I know this is a great book for people who can read but usually don't like to. And like I said, it's because the stories aren't that long, so you don't have to get bogged down. Okay, so this one has like for George McLeod. I don't know who that is. Okay, the most important things are the hardest things to say. We start with the truism. It's true. And then we had a tree house and a big elm which overhung a vacant lot in Castle Rock. All right, so you, oh, you know, I didn't do that with uh, apt pupil. I think I was so was caught up in my friend. Let's take a look at apt pupil. It's that first sentence. He looked like the total all-American kid as he was. Well, he wrote this in the 70s. Probably couldn't get away with a sentence like that nowadays because all-American kid, what do you mean by that? All-American kid, what, white? So I'd probably rephrase that a little bit. As he pedaled his... 26 inch Schwinn with the ape hanger handlebars up the residential suburban street, comma, and that's just what he was, semicolon. Todd Bowden, 13 years old, 5 feet 8, and a healthy 140 pounds, hair the color of ripe corn, blue eyes, white even teeth, lightly tanned skin marred by not even the first shadow of adolescent acne. Okay, man, that's a long, that is a long first sentence. Probably chop that up a little bit, maybe. He was smiling a summer vacation smile as he pedaled. All right. So there's your first sentence. Not as good as some of the others. Not as good as the Shawshank or Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. Okay, the body. Everybody liked this story even before the movie came out. Which, I like the title of the body better than Stand By Me. Stand By Me is just like a, I don't know, just hokey. It's one of those titles that doesn't do justice to the story. I think that was a good movie. All right, come on. So the body's pretty good. And then here's the one I don't think I've ever reread. Good God. Okay, so you got The Breathing Method, The Club. I don't, I know I've read it. I don't remember a thing about it. And I don't think I've reread it. It's the one story. Oh, wait. For Peter and Susan Straub. Oh, yeah, I think Peter, didn't uh, Stephen King and Peter Straub write a book together? What was that? Oh, The Talisman, I think. I never read it because that's when he started branching out to other genres, I think. All right. I dressed a bit more sp speedily than normal on that snowy, windy, bitter night, I admit. Not bad. Speedily. I dressed a bit more speedily. Just quickly? I dressed a bit more quickly than normal. Maybe. I don't know. All right. So you go down, and then... I think it's the shortest of the stories. Ooh, an app? What? What's the app story? Now, see, I like this. Is this by Stephen King? Oh, yeah. See, this is probably the most interesting part of the book. Oh yeah, it is by Stephen King. I haven't read this. Oh, that's cool. Well, I'm not gonna read it now because people can't and people don't like being read to. But yeah. Let's see. Okay, well it doesn't say, but I'm sure oh there it is. Stephen King, 1982. Okay. Awesome. And then let's take a look at some more books that were available in 1982. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, creep show. Bernie Wrights and that? He's a good artist. I remember I was at a comic convention where uh, a bunch of artists had tables and Bernie Wrightson had a table and there were maybe one or two people there and then that 
pack. What's that guy, Rob Liefelder? Well, there's a lion just going around the whole convention. I just, that's just disgusting. So I went to the Burn Your Rights and Table, got some stuff, like those, you know, just to, it's not an original, it's like a printing of an original. All right, so anyways, Godfather, one of my favorite books, that's another one. Yeah, I remember Some Kind of Hero. I remember reading that and then Richard Pryor made a movie of that. All right, Fools Died. Yeah, I couldn't finish that one. I had the needles really good. Keter, oh yeah, all those early Ken Follett or Follett books, those are good. Yeah, The Omen, Damien. Oops, I see, yeah, I see. The Poltergeist. So there you go for 1982. And then, who's the Jonah? Now, didn't he, uh, right, Dune? All right, anyways, this is what you get with the different seasons. And this is a good book to have, because like I said, if you uh, if you ever get that reader's block and you're, you're not sure what to read, this is a good book just to pull out anytime. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily give it to a struggling reader teenager, because this is really kind of, there is some gruesome stuff in there. You have to be really careful about that. Um, it's not, even though, even though the body centers around kids, it's not really YA fiction at all. So you got to be careful with that. Anyways, I think that's it for Stephen King. I think I talked about the stuff that I wanted to talk about. And if not, I guess I'll make another video. So uh, thanks for watching. And um, if there's some other Stephen King novel that, or book that you like more than different seasons, let me know. And if you have another book that you use as your go-to, you know, let me know that too in the comments if you made it this far. All right. Thanks for watching.